I'm Todd Hayden, and this is Legends on the Left, and we're in Boise, Idaho. Let's go. <laughs> This is Legends on the Left. On location in Boise, Idaho, home of Kenny's Rod Shop, and current residents of Northwest Transplant and car building icon, Chris Billy Bob Mole. Todd and crew traveled to meet up with their old friend at the shop he currently works at to see what he's been up to in the past few years. Chris, you go by the name Billy Bob. How did you get that nickname? Um, We're gonna start off with the hard questions right off the, the bat. The hard questions. <laughs> yeah, I knew that was gonna come up. Uh, well, years ago, um, say early 90s, I lived in this small town over in Washington called Elma. Elma, Washington. Yeah, Elma, Washington. I think you've probably been there yeah, and know yeah, of it. A few times. So, it's a little tiny town and I lived in this house that was uh, oh, like three or four little railroad, 12 by 12 railroad shacks put together, little huts. And the garage was three times the size of the house. So, and where I lived, it was kind of a little bit out of town. So um, all my friends would come up and check out, see what was going on. I'd you know build stuff and paint stuff in that garage. And because they were from either Olympia or Aberdeen, the, what they considered the city, Oh. Okay, so they would come <laughs> up and they'd always say, we're going to see what's going on at Hillbilly Hot Rods, or we're going to see what's going on, you know, at Billy Jack's Hack Shack, all this, sure. they always yep. called it something, you know, it was yeah. hillbilly yep. And so, you know, one thing led to another, and then pretty soon it just, that was, oh, yeah. hey, there's Billy Bob, you know, so it kind of, <laughs> kind of a, you know, it's weird how everybody gets their nicknames. And, are, are, is that going to end up on your tombstone someday? Uh, probably so. <laughs> yeah. What got you working on cars and trucks? I've always been into working on things. Um, you know, from the time I was a little kid, uh, my dad, he has a story about when I was four and discovered a screwdriver and took an electric drill apart. And, you know, <laughs> just to try to, you know, it's like once I discovered tools that take stuff apart, I was always working on stuff. So. I did bicycles, um, you know, BMX. How old were you? Oh, probably 10, 11 years old. I, yeah, just always taking stuff apart, couldn't ever leave anything alone. Um, then, you know, once I uh, got into the age of driving, um, just turned into cars and, and just one thing led to another. When you first began, what modifications were you most impressed with? Custom paint. Yeah. Yeah. I always just I've always been that way. Just like what? What about it? Just um, the, that it means finished or what? Uh, no, I think just the the creativity of it. Um, just well, like when I was a kid, it's some of the band paint job. You know, some of those paint jobs with the murals and the some of the stuff that's even popular now, the panel painting that's kind of become popular again with the fish scales and lace and um, flames. I've always liked flames. Um, and then, of course, you know, when we, the 80s and 90s on the mini trucks, you get all the heartbeats and splash and drips. And That's I right. think just the wild colors and the creativity of it, and you could just kind of do what you wanted. To. Yeah, do almost anything, and people would appreciate it because yeah. you know, well, maybe. had that vision. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you used to own a shop. Yes. Uh, how did that come about? Well, I always did. I worked for different 
uh, various hot rod shops, street rod shops, uh, truck and off-road businesses. You know. Like most everybody that does any type of custom work, you always get people that want you to do work on the side. So I do side work and eventually the side work became, it, it got to the point where I was losing money by having a day job. Yeah. So um, I decided to do it full time um, with a, I, I actually did it once when my kids were little, had a shop and um, it got to the point where you know, they on the weekends all they would do is sit and play video games in the shop because I was working so many hours that. Sure. And then, so I went and took a normal day job for a while until the kids got older. Then um, a good friend of mine and I, we decided that we wanted to do it again. So um, he was the same way, losing money by having a day job. And so we went in together and created a, a shop. And we threw names back and forth, but because a lot of people already knew Billy Bob Customs. The stigma. Yep. And <laughs> yeah. So there, the Billy Bob Customs just <laughs> took the name, and there it was. So. This was in Aberdeen? In Aberdeen, Aberdeen, Washington, correct. And how long did you have that shop then? Off and on, about 10 years. When I had a business partner, we had I had a, the shop with him for about five years, mm -hmm. up until about, about four years ago. Um, a little over four years ago, I actually got sensitized to paint chemicals and uh, was really sick for a while. And after, you know, being told that, I just kind of was like, tried to play the tough guy and like, well, everybody's gonna die, and, you know, whatever. And then um, it didn't take too long before I just came to my senses and was like, well, okay, I, you know, I need to get out of doing this and, and quit being sick. So uh, my first vehicle that I ever had was a 54 Chevy pickup that my grandpa gave me and, and we take this corner and that door flies open because they wouldn't stay <laughs> shut and so everybody kind of fell out one guy's on the grabbing onto another one grabs the gear shift and the thing's grinding the gear. What tricks or paint techniques did you like to do? Anything new and different? I, I don't know. I, I'd like to do flames. I like to do the the crazy graphics, like the Cali, Cali style graphics, or you know, the some people call them, um, with a bunch of different air or airbrush effects. Um, I like the airbrush, but I'm not a mirrorless airbrusher. I'm more like an effects mm -hmm. airbrusher. Sure. Like um, the like the realistic flames type stuff. Yeah, I. I and I hate realistic flames, but, but the, yes, it's a yes, technique. Yeah, it's or, not like a mural. Or, or like wood grain or diamond plate or, yeah. or carbon fiber or stuff like that. Yeah. What what paint trick or trend would you like to see brought back in a big way? Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. That, I don't know if I'd so much like to see anything brought brought back necessarily everything kind of comes and goes yeah. um like all the neon colors that are so popular coming back here the last year yes too. yes just it, waiting for to see those on vehicles and, and you will it, it'll come yeah. um yeah. just like you know flames are kind of a timeless thing you might see the style change a little bit but they'll they'll come and go every few years but um you know same with like the cali style wild graphics you'll see they'll pop up on a few different vehicles you know and then here and there and then you won't see them for a couple of years. And, yeah. Um, I'm really surprised scallops haven't come back. You know, I used to see them all the time in the, you know, late 80s, early 90s. What painters, custom painters have you, uh, have influenced you or that you admire? Oh, there's, there's a ton, um, which now I can't think of, but uh, yeah, like all the guys at Cal Concepts, Craig Frazier, um, then uh, Charles Armstrong, I love his work. What would be the ultimate build? Mm, that's pretty much, that's kind of a tough one. Mine, what I like or what I think would be cool changes about every two months, so. Um, if someone came to you right now and said, build me something, it can be your taste, it could be anything you want, I admire you as a builder, I'll write you a check every 15 days. Well, well, what? How about I, how about I, <laughs> what I tell you a you couple build? of what I would like to someday build for myself? Okay. All right. Okay. So I've always wanted a 65, 66 Mustang Fastback. Um, not stock, but not over the top custom. Um, kind of more like a. Uh, sleeper? Yeah, a little bit. Custom I, I want it to look kind of, yeah, semi, you know, kind of a resto mod type car. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I, I really want to build someday a uh, 31, 30, 31 Ford 500 coupe. Um, you know, bare bones, just traditional hot rod. Um, no fenders, no, you know, no hood, just grill, body, trunk lid, doors. Details on what you would do to this thing? Um, I want it nice. I want it like, you know, real detailed and, and that. Um, but like I said, I, I kind of, not really rat rod, but like old traditional, you know, like you could have built it maybe in the late 50s, somewhere in there, but, um, you know, everything nice and neat. And, and the end result for building that? Just a nice just a driver. driver. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Right. Something I can enjoy sure. and drive and something I think is cool and I'd like to build. Yeah. Not everyone wants the Riddler. No, I, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I've never been, I shouldn't say never, but you know, it's, it, that's just not my goal. It's something though. Yeah. I mean, oh, that's, it is. it's impressive. It is. Those it, cars, it very, you just gotta, you gotta give someone credit for that, or a team of credit for that. Uh, what's the most embarrassing vehicle you've ever owned? <laughs> Let me see. Um, my first vehicle that I ever had was a 54 Chevy pickup that my grandpa gave. Yeah. I remember the doors. It was pretty rough. It was like a farm truck and the doors wouldn't stay shut. And, um, one time, you know, I got my driver's license and being in high school and picked up three of my buddies. We were cramming that and we thought, well, we're going to drive past the bus stop, you know. <laughs> so we're driving and we take this corner and that door flies open because they wouldn't stay <laughs> shut. And so everybody kind of fell out. One guy's on the ground onto another one, grabs the gear shift and the thing's grinding the gears. And, so, you know, that was, that was a pretty embarrassing moment. So to this day, there's kids who are on a school bus who are in counseling, <laughs> you know, so, working this out. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I've had embarrassing moments in vehicles. I don't know so much about embarrassing cars. No, that's fine. That was good. That was... <laughs> How do you feel about people pretending that trophies don't matter? Um, ah. I, always think it, I always think that's kind of a lie. <laughs> because I guarantee. Oh, really? Do tell. <laughs> do tell. Okay, so my deal is, and, and I mean, I think to some people they probably don't matter as much as other people. Um, there probably are people. The the older I get, um, I still appreciate everyone I have, and I have still everyone I've ever gotten. Which I was going to get rid of them before I moved here. So, and my wife actually told me she says, "Don't you dare get rid of them." So. My attic is stuffed full of them. Um, I don't really have a place to put them other than that. There's a couple that mean more to me, you know, like bigger shows or something. And, and I have those put up um, a couple places throughout the house. But um, I think as far as people saying that they don't matter, um, you know, like I said, there might be a few people out there but I think a lot of them that say that they don't matter, they're, they're full of shit, you know. Or, or they crap. haven't won. Or, or maybe haven't won. But I guarantee you, and this is one of my jokes, is I always thought it'd be funny to put on a show or an event, and then when it comes to award time, go, well, since all you guys always say that trophies don't matter, we don't have any, so, <laughs> you know, and see how many people Perfect, go, yeah. oh, cool, you know, <laughs> see how well that goes. I think as far as people saying that they don't matter, um, you know, like I said, there might be a few people out there, but I think a lot of them that say that they don't matter, they're, they're full of shit, you know? Or, or they haven't won. Or, or maybe haven't won, but I guarantee you, and this is one of my jokes, is I always thought it'd be funny to put on a show or an event, and then when it comes to award time, go, well, since all you guys always say that trophies don't matter, we don't have any. So, <laughs> you know, and see how many people Perfect, go, yeah. oh, cool. You know, <laughs> see how well that goes over. Exactly. Uh, what are your thoughts on the future of mini truck events and that scene? Actually, I hate to say it, but I, I see it um, being kind of like, if anybody knows what the van runs are, where you'll get the diehards and here in about another 20 years, we'll, we'll have a bunch of, you know, close late 60s, 70 year olds, you know, and you'll, they'll all get together for a show and there'll be like one or two trucks there and everybody else will just be in a motor home or something and they'll call it a mini truck show. And That's it. Yeah. I, I don't think it'll, I, I have seen a resurgence in mini trucks, you know, in the last few years. Um, a lot of guys that had them when they were young or, you know, getting that one that, oh man, if I, 
could have built this, you know, when I was, you know, late teens or back when I had my first mini truck. Oh, I had this Mitsubishi or I had this Isuzu, you know, and well, now I got, you know, my life's and finances are to where I can build this how I'd want to build it if I could have back then. And so I am seeing a lot of that, which is kind of cool. <laughs> what do you dislike most about the custom automotive community? I think the thing I hate most right now is the I whole... said dislike, not hate. Okay. It's a strong word now, come on. <laughs> okay, dislike the thing, but I do kind of hate it. But thing, <laughs> the thing I dislike most is the whole built, not bought thing. It drives me absolutely nuts. You know, it, it really does. It, it, I mean, I get to where somebody says, okay, you shouldn't buy a vehicle and then claim that you did the work on it, but nobody should make fun of or be against somebody that has a vehicle built by somebody else. I mean, if that was the case, I wouldn't work at a place like this. You know, we wouldn't have all these shops. Yeah, you wouldn't. And I think it's funny because, and okay, maybe the guy can't weld the best or maybe whatever, but that's pretty much where all of us started at one point, you know? Nobody popped out of the womb going, oh, I'm a perfect TIG builder, you know. It's, well, and, and, yeah, and then, and also it's just like, what what percentage did you actually build this truck? Right. Okay, you know, you installed some airbags in your garage, but you went to the stereo guy, you went to the interior guy, you went to the paint shop, right. you went to, yes. so, in a way, you know, you still yeah. paid for it. Yeah. You, you I didn't. Mean, you didn't melt down the rubber and vulcanize your own tires or whatever. Oh, wow, yeah, there you go. Yeah. 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 It's like, to what point is the built not bought? Where's the sure. limit there? Do sure. I have to go out there and dig up some ore and make my own metal? And or? also, if you think about it, you know, one day these trucks are going to be for sale. If you give if you give someone a bad enough time about, you know, yes. built not bought, there goes that market, so exactly. you just shot yourself in the foot with the, trying to resell your truck then. Right. Who are you going to sell it to? Right. Burnouts or throwing sparks? Burnouts. Apples or potatoes? Oh, potatoes. Well, yeah, you kind of have to say that one. No, I don't have to say that one. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I like potatoes. I do big potatoes for the price. Yeah. So. This has been like the cleanest shop I think we've been in. Yeah, we, we. It's it's just crazy clean. I mean, it's just it's like beautiful. We, so, yeah, I we, mean, we do we do try to. <laughs> well, as you can see, the vehicles we take pride on what we build. Yeah. Oh, uh, everything's just. Perfect. And, and so we it's, do. We we spend um, at the end of every day we pick up and clean, and then on Friday, um, you know, we do usually spend half an hour to an hour cleaning up. Um, Plus, who wants to work in a dirty mess all the time? Well, you'd be surprised. Uh, you, you know, you know just as well <laughs> what the well, answer to that well, is. I know. <laughs> I know. I don't know if it's by choice or not, but and shops course, end up that way. Of course, way, it makes so. me makes it hard for me to roll around in dirt and look like I'm working on it. Say how many zombies can Rob Zombie rob if Rob Zombie could rob zombies? It's all for the shot. All okay, for the shot. Did you see that? Did they want to... No. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't know. This one? I got this good hat. Okay, we're going. Woo. <laughs> 500 miles, huh? Yep. <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> it is pretty stupid, but it's fun. <laughs> What do we do? I don't What's know. What's your guess? 
My guess is we messed up something. <laughs> yeah, car troubles on the set, behind the scenes. I didn't do it. Oh, right there. How was your ride? Um, it's not smooth blacktop, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's, hold on. Where? Tranny Mount Brook. Oh wow! Holy moly! Look at that. Hmm. 